All right. Thank you for listening to Remake Rewind, the podcast where we decide if remakes or reboots should have happened. As always, I'm Mike, and back from a month off, we've got Mr. Alex Ortega. How you doing, Mr. Alex Ortega? Hello. It's great to be back. I'm doing well. How was a uh, retail <laughs> holiday season? It was, uh, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I, for one, enjoyed not working on the holidays, not working Black Friday, not working Christmas <laughs> Eve, not working any of that stuff. I had five days off for the, oh oh no, six days off for Thanksgiving. I had five days off for Christmas <laughs> and I'm, I have a four day weekend this week as well. So <laughs> now it's you, it, Alex. It was so bad. Like David is sick right now. So it's Good. actually, yeah. Good. <laughs> Um, David will be back either next episode or the episode after because he's celebrating his like a pretty big anniversary with his girlfriend. So he'll be back eventually, but we've got Alex back. And you know, that's it's better than nothing. I know people enjoyed our guests and having Katrina on, but it's nice to have the actual host back, and I'm glad to have you back, Alex. Yay. Okay. All right, so our first <laughs> episode back. What are, what are we gonna be talking about today? We're gonna be talking about the producers. Yes, we is. <laughs> and uh, have you seen either of these before? I have not. I've like saw the springtime for Hitler. That was like passed around in high school for me. And that's where like, oh, that's where that. You just know the song? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what the remake, which it, remake isn't necessarily the best term for it because it's actually based off the Broadway play that's based off the movie. That came out when I worked at the movie theater and I had no desire to watch it. I actually... <laughs> did not like musicals until probably a year ago that actually uh, saved yeah i'm not a huge fan of musicals i gotta be I've, honest i never was um with the exception of maybe moulin rouge because that's uh, my wife's favorite movie so i've watched it a bunch and it's actually you know visually incredible and they do weird things with frame rate and the music's pretty catchy huh. uh, and it's funny but i never liked musicals until last year i took my wife to see greatest showman i think on christmas and I remember watching that movie and maybe on the second or third song, I was like elbowing my wife pretty hard. She's like, what? I'm like, <laughs> this is really fucking good. And then we ended up buying the soundtrack, um, both digitally and on CD for the uh, greatest showman. Uh, and so I've actually been going back and watching some musicals. Um, so I'm actually was really interested to revisit this one. I had seen it once. I, I avoided it while working at the movie theater and I saw it maybe 10 years ago. And I thought it was going to be really good. And I'd seen the original with the Gene Wilder and Zero uh -huh. um, before. And remember liking it, but it's probably been about 10 years since I've seen that one. So I was really interested in going back. Hmm. So you you said you haven't seen any of these, right? I haven't seen any of these. And I was actually surprised that there was like a musical for the the quote unquote remake. remake. I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> I forgot that it was a full on musical. Like I knew there were more musical numbers. Nah, this is like, yeah, this is like, but this is like up. a straight musical. <laughs> yeah. like, I think what I like are the ones that are kind of like um, the Disney movies. Yes, yeah. Where it's mostly plot and an occasional song, or like Greatest Showman, it's mostly plot and it's mostly talking, but there, you know, there are a few songs thrown in. Uh, but we'll talk more about that once we get into that movie. Let's just dive right into the original, um, starring Gene Wilder and Zero. And uh, I think you're going to synopsize this one. <laughs> yeah, allow me to synopsize. Uh, so this one's a uh, down on his luck theatrical producer, Max Bielostock, is forced to romance rich old ladies to finance his efforts. When timid accountant Leo Bloom reviews Max's accounting books, the two hit up upon a way to make a fortune by producing a surefire flop. The play which is to be go their gold mine, springtime for Hitler. And that's by Scott Renshaw. Yep. That's that's pretty <laughs> accurate. <laughs> so what I appreciate about this movie, and I remember vaguely liking the movie the one time I saw it. Like I mentioned at the top of the episode, I watched both of these probably about 10 years ago. I watched both of them in the same week. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember liking this one, but when I turned this on and saw that it was only an hour and 24 minutes, I was like on board because it doesn't matter if it's bad at <laughs> you know an hour and 24 minutes i actually felt the same i was so relieved i was like oh thank god it's not a long movie right <laughs> um the last movie we did for uh 
who were in my childhood. We did a Jonathan Taylor Thomas movie, the, uh, his like Christmas movie, called I'll Be <laughs> Home for Christmas. And then when I saw it, I was like, it's not even 90 minutes, which normally means like post 70s era, like when you hit like 80s, 90s, 2000s, if a movie's less than 90 minutes, it's typically not going to be good. Um, <laughs> and I was right. That one was not good, but it was it was very breezy and brisk. So uh, <laughs> I was relieved to see that this one was going to be short because... I had uh, some plans yesterday, and I watched both of them yesterday, like, back-to-back. Mm -hmm. So I was really relieved that one of them was short. Yeah. So what did what did you think about the movie? Like, just general first impressions. I, I actually liked it. I was surprised, like, the, the comedy is very aligned to, like, what I was, like... There's, like, scenes that I like where uh, Gene Wilder walks in on the Max, and he's, like, um, ha he's like fondling with the ladies, and he's, like, Hold no, 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 touch no. me. Yeah, holy touchy. He's like, no, no, no. You, you don't say. I forgot. What he said. You say, oops. <laughs> so <he's, Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then it like comes back because like he's like comes up. He's like, why are you in my hallway? He's like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah? What was really interesting? What I really liked about this movie is I I like Gene Wilder, and this was like only his like seventh movie or seventh mm -hmm. acting credit. It was only like his. It was like his second big movie, but it was his first like leading role. Mm -hmm. And so much so, like, what was interesting is the studio was actually really nervous about hiring him. Uh, but Mel Brooks was like, he's the only one. And the studio actually was willing to give Mel Brooks an extra $35,000, which back in, you know, the 60s is a ton yeah. of money. That's a, yeah. They were willing to give him extra money to go and recast it because they didn't like some of the dailies they saw. But Max, not Max Brooks, uh, Mel Brooks, that was stupid. Mel <laughs> Max Brooks. Max Brooks is his son who writes that zombie book. Uh, Mel Brooks uh, refused to recast Gene Wilder. I I think this movie is great with Gene Wilder. He, he is he grew insane on, in this like, movie. I, I didn't really like his performance in the beginning, but then like as I got more with the character, I was like, oh yeah, I, I I'm liking this. <laughs> yeah, that that initial scene is insane. So <laughs> yeah. the beginning of the movie, like uh, Alex said, is um, zero plays max who's a used to be like one of the most famous broadway producers but has produced a series of flops he is resorting to banging old women who are rich for money to kind of survive and you know he makes leo bloom played by gene walter super nervous because he's already feels awkward for walking in on him having like this weird sexual exploit yeah. which resulted in a ton of like broken furniture <laughs> like injuries and stuff like that it was really strange uh <laughs> so he's already kind of nervous but he's this, this like neurotic super shy nervous timid man and max just starts like yelling at him about the books and then he's like you have 60 seconds to tell me what, what's going on with my books and like not even two seconds in he's like 58 seconds, you've wasted two seconds. And then so he keeps going, and he's like, 55 seconds, 50 seconds. And then he just fucking loses it. He, he just, just starts screaming, like, yeah. I can't do this. I can't do this. You're yelling at me. And then, like, I'm he hysterical. freaks out. Like, You're making me hysterical. Yeah, Max freaks out. Like, he's worried. He's like, what are you doing? And then Gene Wilder pulls out this, like, it's he calls it his blue blanket. <laughs> but it's seriously like the size of a handkerchief, but it's supposed to be like his security blanket from a baby that's obviously like disintegrated but it's thick, over the years. Though. It looks it looks nice and comfy. <laughs> it looks like it's a baby blanket, but it's also yeah. like the size of a handkerchief. <laughs> yeah. And so Max goes to touch it and he loses like Get your hands off blue blanket. <laughs> and then he has like this is a scene that he's like super famous for. And he you, you kinda hit it, he's like, I'm hysterical, I'm hysterical, I'm hysterical. <laughs> oh. Ah, ah. He just starts screaming, so Max throws water on him, and he's like, like "I'm <laughs> wet, and I'm still hysterical." And then he slaps him. Slaps he's him. Like, I'm in pain, and I'm still wet, and I'm hysterical, <laughs> and it's insane. Like it's really uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> it's. Oh. It I think it was like at that moment I was like, okay, I, I'm liking this guy. Like at first I was like, the blanket was like, I, oh, this is weird and like a bit much, and then it just kicks it up, and I was like, oh, okay, no, I get it now. This is <laughs> right. This is who he is. He's a nut job. <laughs> it's so... like that's why I knew like the movie's not really to be taken seriously. Right. So, yeah. Oh, this movie's definitely <laughs> all in just fun. Like so, this movie was originally called Springtime and Hitler, and then, like, the producers decided that 
there's no way in hell that they could release this movie under that name. So they have to change, <laughs> they changed it to the producers, but it is insane. Like even the music. So Mel Brooks wrote and directed this movie, the music towards the end, like there, this movie is not a musical, but there are a few musical numbers because it's about a play. Yeah. Mel Brooks doesn't write or read music. So to be able to make the music for this, he wrote the lyrics, but then he hummed the music to musicians and then hired musicians to actually write the music for it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's a really weird production. They they actually filmed some of like these manic scenes last when uh so that way he would feel a little bit more comfortable because he Gene Wilder was actually not a big name yet. In fact, he was actually getting unemployment checks. So when he got the audition mm-hmm. and and then they had the call back, he actually had to excuse himself. He said he had I don't remember what I right, but this is like a thing that he said is in an interview, like 20 years later, he said that he had to excuse himself from the callback, and he told them he had um, some calls to make, but he actually ran to the unemployment office to cash an unemployment check. So this movie basically saved his life. Oh, jeez, yeah. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> deal. Uh, <laughs> so this movie, like you said, you cannot take it seriously. Like, it is farce. And, I mean, that makes sense considering it's a Mel Brooks film. <laughs> But it, it's nowhere near as crazy as uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights, um, Blazing, Blazing Saddles, Saddles Spaceballs. <laughs> yeah. But it's still, it, it's still almost like a, it's almost like a stylized hyper realistic world kind of thing where it's just like, it's like our world, but just everybody's slightly extreme. It's almost like Tarantino, but like not violent and racist. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So the thing that that's insane, like the characters in this movie are insane. Like whether it's you go by the director of the play that they end up hiring, or the actor for the play, or the writer of the play, <laughs> and then their secretary. Oh uh, yeah, it's just a weird movie. Uh, what what were the highlights for you? Uh, it's uh, definitely LSD. Uh, he he took the just like how he stole the sh- the performance for the play. He stole it for me. Uh, for the movie <laughs> that character is so weird and when i was watching the movie i kind of felt like i was getting robin williams slash mitch hedberg vibes because it was like that laid back kind of thing and then i realized this was in like 1967 uh-huh. <laughs> years before we you know even had robin williams on like mork and mindy and obviously like decades before we had mitch hedberg so it was interesting seeing like you know that kind of style of hey man <laughs> What you do and like that laid back, <laughs> chill kind of performance, baby? Like, <laughs> How's it going? Right, like, it's just is so is completely <laughs> different. And that whole thing, I guess we could talk about him for a little bit. So, I guess we should kind of do a little overarching plot real quick, okay. and then we'll yeah, I'll yeah. circle back to LSD. So basically, in a nutshell, they figure out that you can make more money off of a flop by basically cooking the books you raise more money than you need and the way they figure this out was max's last play he raised sixty thousand dollars for but he only spent fifty eight thousand on the play yeah and so he had two thousand extra and they just would obviously cook the book and act like they didn't have that so leo says hey you know theoretically this can happen like if you raised a million dollars and only spent fifty thousand dollars you'd have a ton of money kind of thing so he's just being like super hypothetical he's like yeah. let's well, assume that, you're a that dishonest interaction man. was also great because like he was just like talking to himself he's like oh yeah so you could make more of a flop and then he's like max is like what, what do you mean he's like oh i'm just saying that you could you, you keep saying it but you're not explaining what do you mean it's just yeah and then he's like yeah well let's just assume you're a dishonest man assume away <laughs> yeah so he kind of like he gets really excited like yeah. that somebody is willing to listen to him so that's the whole point of this character is he's He's uh, an accountant, and everyone kind of looks down on him. Yeah, and he explains this whole thing like if we raise a bunch of money, like, and you had a dishonest accountant, like you could make a ton of money. <laughs> and so, like, the next scene is Max trying to convince him to do it. And he says no. So then he takes him on like a trip to New York. <laughs> but he treats him like a kid, though, because like <laughs> he's like going on a merry-go-round and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and takes him on like a paddle boat. Yeah. And so he's like, what if somebody from work sees me? And then Max was like, well, then you'll see them here, too. So they can't tell on you. So just enjoy it. And he's like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And so Max finally comes to the conclusion that 
he's been working his ass off his whole life and has nothing why should he be counting he says something along the lines like i count everybody else's money for a living yeah. people that i'm smarter than better than i want i want that i want what i see in the movies so he agrees to do it so they figure out they need to make the worst play possible so they find a play that basically glorifies hitler written by a crazy nazi which i definitely want to spend some time talking about this guy oh, yeah, yeah. but you wanted to talk about lsd right we can talk about friends <laughs> well let's talk about lsd since you brought him up we've already kind of circled back so basically in a nutshell they get this play and then they need to cast hitler and they do this whole thing of auditions and they see all these people and the director the director who's crazy in his own right doesn't like any of them so this guy walks in he's got this giant earring <laughs> he's wearing striped pants but then he has like furry boots that come up past his knee he had something like like was it like a popcorn necklace or something he had something like a weird he had a uh he had a campbell soup can oh, so, yes, around his neck it was it was a soup can <laughs> so he thought it was a different he's like is this boomerang baby <laughs> and the director's like no and then max is like yeah 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 this is boomerang <laughs> and has him sing this song he goes like what's your name he's like lsd baby <laughs> and then he says something along the lines like, like what are you like what have you been doing and he goes uh, about six months in jail yeah <laughs> oh okay well can you do like what are you going to do for us today like what do you mean just do what you do best he goes well that's why i went to jail <laughs> and then he sings this song which is just insane so he has like all these flowers and he just is like talking about the power of love yeah, and yeah. drugs and what's weird about this scene is every other person so we saw like three or four other people audition and we you know they're all maybe like 10 to 15 seconds and they were all they all had like a piano accompaniment right yeah this guy starts singing and all of a sudden there's like these three like, hot yeah. women behind him like keyboard guitar tambourine <laughs> so like this band appears out of nowhere and then when he's done playing the song he pulls out a banana and starts peeling it, and you think he's going to eat it, no, but then he, he puts it by his like, face. Like a phone. <laughs> what did he put in his mouth? He he put his like a ring or something in his mouth. Or... It, no, it was huge. It was this, this big metal thing. It was really weird. <laughs> it's just so bizarre, which I loved. <laughs> right. And then, so, like, tell us how he played Hitler. Like, give us a like, kind of a... So, so uh, the, that's what... So, the... It does like the introduction of springtime to Hitler uh, for Hitler, and I was like, "Oh, where where is LSD? I thought they hired that guy." And all of a sudden, he comes out and he does like like this like groovy baby like uh, persona, but he's doing it as Hitler. <laughs> it's just so great, so, you know. Yeah, and his like little hand salutes are like all kind of like effeminate, <laughs> and he's just like, "Hey!" And everybody starts laughing at him. So he's the reason the play ends up being a hit. So. They hire a terrible director. They hire this guy thinking he's like a terrible actor. Yeah. And people are like legitimately pissed at the play. <laughs> and, they're all, and they're like, this is in bad taste. This is a bad taste. Yeah. But then he comes on and Hitler looks hilarious. <laughs> so they're like, oh, this isn't serious. This is making fun of Hitler. And then all of a sudden everybody's on board. Yeah. Uh, but he's just like, hey, baby. <laughs> like, And then uh, Fran uh, Franz, the writer of the play, who is a Nazi, yeah. just he's like, he, what is this? <laughs> what is Hitler never what says is this baby? baby? I didn't write this baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that was really funny because he's freaking out. He's saying all that. And then like a lady is like, will you please shut up? And he's like, you shut up. <laughs> you are the audience. I am the author. I outrank you. <laughs> My favorite is that like when he like he gets up, he's like, please, the, the play is in progress. Please, <laughs> like, don't, don't, don't interrupt. But he's like, ah, he's, he's just so angry. <laughs> <laughs> so this character franz is a nazi living in new york so they have to go get permission to use this play so they go up to the roof where he's living and he's like tending to you know a bunch of birds and he immediately when they open up the door he freaks out and starts singing he's like my country <laughs> tis of the and they're like it's fine we don't work for the government no worries so they start talking about the play and he says something that's like pro hitler yeah. And Leo's like, dude, they can hear you. And then he just like singing the Yankee Doodle. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Yankee Doodle dandy. <laughs> and gives them like swastikas, like oh, yeah. to show that they, uh, yeah. he can trust them. So then, like, as soon as they get downstairs, they uh, take these swastikas <laughs> off, throw them in a garbage and can, and start spitting, spitting on it. <laughs> but this guy's like insane. He's like, oh, the, the whole movie, he's wearing a Nazi helmet. 
Yeah. And then at the end when he's like, he shows up in this like really old tuxedo and he's <laughs> still <laughs> wearing the Nazi helmet. helmet. <laughs> and he like uh, dresses the, 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 bo- the oh, I forgot. It was like a garçon or a waiter or something like that. He's like, no, you, you button this up. It's always straight, always straight in yourself. <laughs> it's just <laughs> that character. Is well, great. and then that same character, he goes, he's pissed because the play doesn't go as well as he thinks it should go because they it ended up being a comedy versus yeah. you know a serious like love letter to Hitler. So he goes to kill Max and Leo, and then they convince them to kill. Like, why don't you kill LSD? Kill the actors. <laughs> yeah. And Gene Wilder's character Leo says something along like, "We can't kill the actors; they're humans." And then Max is like, "Have you ever eaten with one?" <laughs> kind of thing. And so they go to blow up like LSDs. I don't know if it was the house or the stage. It was like the yeah the theater. They're gonna blow up the theater. So he has like the dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that scene's so dope. So they go and they set up this dynamite and then they walk away and then something on his belt hooks back onto the dynamite and then they walk around and then they see it. They're like, oh my god. <laughs> so they go and set it back up and he's like, wait, we need to test the fuse, make sure it's the right type of fuse. But then he lights the fuse that's attached to the <laughs> the bomb. <laughs> So he goes and runs and gets like blown up, but he doesn't die. Like at the end, they're in a courtroom scene. I also like that he's interaction just wrapped though, in... because he's like, okay, so we got to test if this is a quick fuse or a slow fuse. And he like lights it. He's like, see, this is smart thinking. This uh, now I know it's the <laughs> quick fuse. And they all. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes and runs off screen, and they just hear a blast. Yeah. And then like the next scene, they're in court, and the judge is like, "You guys are guilty. Do you have anything to say for yourself?" and you know, Leo gives this great speech on how, hey, the crime, cr- laws are there to protect people, but who have we harmed? These women wanted to give Max their money. They want because he, you know, yeah. pleased them sexually. And he goes, I didn't, you know, I was an honest man before, but I'm not harmed. Like, he's the only person to ever call me Leo. Everybody else has called me Bloom and everything. <laughs> and this whole time, like, he's having this really impassionate speech saying, like, they didn't do, they, yes, they broke the law, but, you know, they shouldn't have any you know consequences because they feel bad and nobody was harmed and the whole time franz is just sitting there in bandages still wearing the army helmet (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, and i guess the last thing we should kind of talk about the the director of this movie or not the movie of the play because that character is weird as hell too (laughs) So they show up at this guy's house, and there's this, like, super effeminate man wearing, like, classic, like, beatnik clothing, like, tight black pants, yeah. black turtleneck, and he's got, like, a fake beard on. Fake beard, and it's just, like, all very, like, it's just it's just up a notch. <laughs> right. So he goes in, like, this guy's a little, like, strange, but then they he's, like, the director's assistant. So the director comes out, and he's wearing a dress. And he's supposed to be going to a costume party as uh, Anastasia, uh, the old Russian princess. Right. And they, <laughs> this made me laugh so hard. So they're like, hey, by any chance, did you read the play? And he's like, I devoured it. And he's like, I don't know if this is my style, though. <laughs> and basically, they're like, well, you only ever do these like, oh, musicals. Yeah. Show, like, show you should girls, do something. Da- we have dancing and dancing numbers. Right. Yeah. Like you should do something that's important. And, and then so he goes, You're right. He goes, This what I love about this is I didn't like the Third Reich is Germany. <laughs> I never knew that. This play is so full of all of these interesting tidbits like yeah, that. Historical facts. <laughs> and so they go, What are you gonna do? He's like, No, I need time to think about it. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, well, and he's just like this super weird. What made me laugh is also he's like, oh, it's a it's a drama, so it's like it's serious. It's something different than what I do. And he's like, but we got. Uh, he says something like like, oh, we got gotta make it more like a uh, uh, I forgot appealing or something like make it more more digestible. He's like, I don't know we'll we make it we'll, put, <laughs> we'll do dances and showgirls. <laughs> that made me crack yeah. up. <laughs> and, and they're like, yeah, that's right. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's so they they set it all up and they think they have everything that they need. Yeah. So once they hire the director, they're like, we deserve a toy. And Leo's like, what do you mean? We should save some money just in case we get caught. And he's like, and we can give some back. And he's like, no, I deserve a toy. So they go and hire this like super hot Swedish oh, yeah. person. <laughs> they're like, well, what is she going to do? And he's like, oh, yeah, go to work. And she just starts like dancing. dancing. <laughs> 
it's just like so that's the thing it's like all these characters are just larger than life <laughs> ridiculous i but it still felt grounded like there was just these absurd characters but it felt like this could happen so it, one of the other things that i really appreciate and this was something they used to do a lot in like the 60s and 70s um so the play goes and it has springtime for hitler and there are all these like bulgarian dressed people and then there's these two women that come out and they're wearing um one's wearing like beer steins covering her boobs another one's wearing pretzels <laughs> covering her boobs yeah yeah and so people are freaking out and a couple people get up and leave so max and Leo are like let's get out of here before the intermission before we get like oh, yeah. killed oh, yeah. so they go to this bar across the street <laughs> and they decide to toast to their good fortune and there's like just some like They're random guy like, in the bar to failure. Drink. <laughs> he's like to for- hey thanks <laughs> yeah <laughs> so they come out so the guy's like sitting there they're all drinking and then during the intermission, a couple people come over like, this is the best show I've ever seen. It's hilarious. And they're like, oh, no. And then so they all put their hands on their mouth. So like the the third guy puts his hands over his mouth. Yeah. Leo puts his hands over his ears. And then Max puts his hands over his eyes. So there was like the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil thing. Right, right, right. Like, I laughed at it because it's, <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's just really clever. And the way they did it and the delivery was great. So basically when it happens, they get caught, the play is a hit, and they obviously can't pay anybody back, and then there there's a fight right before France comes and tries to kill them, where Leo tries to steal the books so he can go turn himself in, and he wants oh, yeah. to cooperate, and Max <laughs> and him are fighting when Franz comes in and tries to shoot him, but there's a point where they're like, he's like, I should have never listened to you, I should never listen to you, I hate you, double, 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 <laughs> and then Leo's like, fat, fat. Fat, 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 <laughs> and everything. So it's just like this larger than life performance. Like it, it's this movie ripped. Like it was just so fast. It was so fun. It was frenetic. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed watching this movie. Yeah, no, same. Like it, the pacing is great. I like the setup for jokes. Like the the Ula uh, go to work thing. Like they come back after like it was a hit the play, and Ula's like make make love Max, and she's like no no Ula go to work and then she, like she goes to the record <laughs> she, starts she starts dancing and he's like uh. <laughs> it's just yes this movie is great it's great i loved it and it's just weird stuff like like that little touch of franz always wearing the helmet no matter what he was wearing <laughs> yeah uh and it, like it skips like crazy so like right when they cast lsd it, it fades out him eat like using the banana as a phone eating whatever that metal thing is yeah. and then it just cuts to opening eye at the play like it just jumps and like the little things like that band coming out of nowhere like it's just really fun like there's another really great joke that i asked when or that i liked when um they're trying to figure out what director they're gonna get they met uh max mentioned like this guy's the worst director he's the only person to ever have a play close at the first rehearsal Uh kind of thing and then so leo's like that's great can do you think he'll take the job and max is like only if we ask him (laughs) kind of thing it's just little simple jokes. like none of these jokes are like super highbrow no. but they're not like all vulgar and crass like it's just it's just quick wit and i really appreciate it yeah definitely oh uh, like in that in the end of that first song with the springtime for hitler one man claps and then like the audience like starts beating him up <laughs> like just oh uh, yeah that. That, it's really that, great. that was great he was like what <laughs> yeah no that's it let's let's move on to the second one <laughs> all right the first thing that I want to say before I actually do the synopsis, <laughs> I just want to point this out. The 2005 version is a movie about a play based on a play about a play based on a movie oh my God. about a play. <laughs> so basically, obviously, the play the 2005 one is based off the Broadway play, which is about a movie about a play. <laughs> so <laughs> it's 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 weird. Uh, <laughs> they're doing that with spam a lot now too so spam a lot was based off of monty python and the holy grail oh. and then it turned into a musical spam a lot well now spam a lot's getting turned into a movie what the fuck <laughs> yeah they also did it with street fighter so street fighter was a video game that got turned into a movie right yeah. but there was a street fighter oh movie the movie the video, video game, game. <laughs> yeah with john Clyde so it was a Dan. video game yeah. based off a movie based off a video game <laughs> oh man um all right so my synopsis size let me synopsize this <clears throat> New York, 1959. Max Bylestock was once the king of Broadway, but now all of his shows close on opening night. Things turn around when he's visited by the neurotic accountant Leo Bloom, 
who proposes a scheme tailor-made for producers who can only make flops. Raise far more money than you need, then make sure the show is despised. No one will be interested in it, so you can pocket the surplus. To this end, they produce a musical called Springtime for Hitler, written by escaped Nazi Franz Liebkin. Then they get insanely flamboyant Roger Debris to direct. Finally, they hire as a lead actress the loopy Swedish bombshell Ouya, whose last name has over 15 syllables. That's not true. We only got her first name. Uh, as opening night draws near, what can go wrong? Well, there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> what, what were your impressions of this movie? Just high level first impression i i I didn't like it i did not like it i actually watching it i was like this seems like uh i didn't know it was a a musical before so like i actually watching i was like this doesn't seem like it's it's like going for the medium it is like i felt like if i was watching it i would have enjoyed it more live if you saw it live Yeah. yeah i feel the same way so the thing that's interesting about this movie, so like you you hit it right on the head it was a broadway play it was a tony award winning play it's like a record like winning I, like hamilton's the closest thing to the producers like the producers was a hit hmm. and in this movie all the lead actors were actually reprising their role from the play with the exception of will ferrell and uma thurman oh, okay um they did replace those are the only two people that were replaced for the film okay so the thing is the problem with it is these guys Matthew Broderick and and Nathan Lane did this movie or did this play, you know, thousands of times. Yeah. And they probably they there's a difference between stage acting and acting for screen. You got to overdo it so you can see your emotions. You got to be over the top. Yeah. You got to project your voice funny. You got to do it completely different so people can see the inflection because it's not HD. You're seeing them from a distance. Yeah, it's everybody yeah. acted in this like it was a play versus a movie. That, yeah. And I think, I think that, that that made it worse. So initially, I kind of liked some of the stuff initially. And it's funny. So my wife, uh, Katrina, was in the other room. And she's like, yeah, you know, I remember liking it. But it's nowhere near as good as the original. And I'm like, I remember liking it. But I I really don't remember which one I liked more. And she's like, this one's not as good. I'm like, oh, okay. So there were a couple of jokes. I'm like, oh, I really like this. And then Matthew Broderick came on and did the whole neurotic scene. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't like this. Yeah, it, it it's like I do see him channeling a bit of like Gene Wilder. Like I, I, like I hear it sometimes. I think he did it differently. I think he did it different enough where it wasn't just copying. But it just it wasn't good. It, yeah, it it's it's just. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Like there, like you said, there are like jokes that happen. I'm like, oh, that that gave me a chuckle. Like that's that's pretty great. Well, and the thing is, this movie changes a few things. Few, nothing major. There's only one major plot point that's completely different, and it. Well, there's like two, but they all revolve around Ulya, mm-hmm. and then there's another one around the director. So there's like three differences right. between this and the original. And then there's just weird shit in this movie that think that would be good in a play on stage that just don't translate well to movies like the Franz's birds. Uh, uh-huh just didn't work for me i thought that was stupid and like i forgot that i thought this movie was a musical almost like greatest showman or a disney movie where there's an occasional song but there are like 30 songs in this movie yeah like there's times where it's like song 30 seconds of dialogue song another song right after another song and then you get some dialogue and it's just it's and the music's not that great in it like matthew broderick isn't that strong of a singer mm. Nathan Lane wasn't that strong of a singer. It, I, honestly, I think the best musical numbers were Will Ferrell, and even his were just singing German nonsense. Uh, yeah. It it <sighs> it expands on things that I felt like didn't also need to be expanded. Like the, it goes d- dive deeper into like Leo's life, and I already got the gist of it, like of how he is from the original. Like I didn't need to see him go to work. I didn't need to well, definitely didn't need to see that musical number of him being unhappy and like dreaming about being a producer and stuff like that. So this movie is more than an hour longer than the original one. So this one's like two and a half hours long, which is insane. (laughs) And I actually didn't watch this all the way straight through. So I had um, a buddy of mine was in town visiting. So he was supposed to tell me when he was going to hang, like we were supposed to meet at a certain time, but he's like, I overslept. So like, I'll hit you up in a little bit. So he hit me up in the middle of the movie. Uh, and I'm like, that's fine. I needed a break for this. <laughs> yeah. And then I came home and watched it. Like, 
every it, it's insane so like once they got to the play like the movie still had over an hour it was like an hour and 15 minutes left i was yeah. like jesus and then like they had already gotten caught like the play had already ended and friends already yeah. came to try to kill them and there were still 45 it's minutes still, i'm like what are the they gonna do is so long it's no need <laughs> like i don't get it like yeah it, it does a recap of the movie at the end of the movie. Yeah, the post credit scene <laughs> is a recap of the movie. <laughs> and the, the other thing about this movie is it recycles so many of the same jokes. Um, so, like, in the opening, I didn't even, we didn't even talk about all the great one-liners. We brought up a bunch, but, like, one of the other great one-liners that Max has when Leo comes to visit him for the first time, he's talking to himself, and then Leo interjects. He's like, quiet, I'm having a rhetorical question uh, conversation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, kind of thing, and so they're like that joke. Like literally, all the best jokes from the original are in this movie verbatim. Yeah, yeah. So, and you know, it's fine to have and pay homage and have them, but like they delivered them exactly the same. And this one, I did appreciate that they made Max seem like a little sleazier. Like he didn't have as nice of a, a place as he did in the original one. Uh, uh, and he he was a little bit more swarmy, I think. <laughs> Because, like, there was this whole thing, like, every time they do something, Leo's like, I think we're in too deep. And he's like, no, I'll tell you when we're in too deep. And it kept going. Like, he did che- seem a little bit more like a sleeves ball in this one. But uh, it just wasn't enjoyable. Like, I just, I, fig- I figured with these guys winning, both winning Tonys for this mo- this uh, play, yeah. I thought for sure, like, these guys would knock it out of the park. Because generally, I like Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane, but I really like Matthew Broderick in almost all of his movies uh, yeah for sure and i just i did not like him in this it i think it, it's definitely more of a fortunate like it's just not being adapted properly right uh, that was the issue like i like the dance numbers are like uh, i i felt like if it was done better like in a like if it was choreographed more for the movie and like if it, it just took advantage of like oh let's like use the camera and like move it more but it was just stationary and i'll like cut in and then i'll cut back yeah it was shot like a play like yeah. there was wa- there weren't really any like one shot two shots there weren't any pans or sweeps like everything was static like a play yeah and the other th- and initially i thought i was really gonna like this so i really liked when hold me touch me shows up and she's like it's me hold me touch me and <laughs> So Nathan Lane does this thing to clean up the apartment really quick, and then he goes to the armoire where he has all the pictures of the old women he bangs, and he said, like, he's going through them, and he's like, where is Hold Me, Touch Me? Where is Hold Me, Touch Me? I see Kiss Me, Feel Me, Pinch Me, Pinch Me, Lick Me, Bite Me, Suck Me, Fuck! Here she is. <laughs> kind of thing. Like, and then there's a point where Matthew Broderick calls a character an asshole, and they have some play on words. Like, it, this movie is a little bit more vulgar and crass than the original yeah. one, but, you know, it came out 40, almost 40 years later. So, you know, it's fine to update that. But, like, some of the major changes is, like, Leo Bloom with Matthew, Matthew Broderick. Like, that whole, like, I'm wet. I'm hysterical. I'm wet. Like, it was more annoying than <laughs> funny. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just didn't like it. And then they do the same thing where they go out, you know, to the park. And they go out here. And Nathan Lane shows him, like, a day out in New York City. And he he's just like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then you mention he goes to work. And he sings a song about how terrible work is and decides that he's going to go. He runs back to the park and Nathan Lane's still there <laughs> and they agree to do it. And then like, there's this plot, the whole movie where uh, Bloom keeps trying to put on a hat mm. and Max is like, that's a producer's hat. And he goes, well, I'm a producer now. It's like, you're not a producer until the play is done. Oh, and then throughout the movie he tries to do it. And then at the end he gets, you know, the he hat, but that, yeah. it just wasn't like, it wasn't that clever of a gag. To, to bring it like they played it out like five times uh the the only scene that i i did like as a musical number and i thought that was pretty funny was like when uh you see all the ladies all the ladies coming out that he's going to uh get oh that he's gonna bang yeah get the funding for i was like oh that's yeah and then he knocks them all over as they hand <laughs> high fives yeah them. I was like, that's I, a I good, did think that was good, funny. Good visual gag to see, like, oh, these are how many ladies he's going through and and stuff like that. <laughs> the the other thing that was kind of funny, oh, I mean, it wasn't great, but I thought Uma Thurman looked great in this part. Mm-hmm. Which she comes and she thinks that they're casting, and Leo's like, oh, we're not casting. Max is like, yes, we are. We just started today. <laughs> so she sings this song about, um, it's kind of a throwaway gag when 
when Bloom is looking at the books, yeah. Max goes out in the balcony, sees this like blonde walk by. He's like, "Hey, baby, <laughs> flaunt it!" And she comes back. She goes, "Yeah, some crazy, creepy guy was like yelling at me and made me think of this song." And she sings a song about how hot she is and she should flaunt it. Yeah. And she did look good in this movie, like, but that's a little weird. So what changes is they hire her to be the lead actress, but then they also hire her to be the secretary, and she's just kind of dumb. <laughs> And has the thing she goes, they're like, she goes, well, I have a schedule I like to keep from five to seven. <laughs> I exercise from seven to nine. I eat a breakfast from nine to 11. I practice singing at 11. I have sex. <laughs> what time should I come in? And they're both like 11. 11. <laughs> and she ends up having an affair with, well, you think they're having an affair. Like she keeps trying to come on to bloom. Yeah. And there's this weird, I actually did laugh at this part. There's a musical number talking about how they should sleep together. And you see them kind of like pretending to make out and everything. And they go behind this couch and you see her pop up and then he pops up and then you see clothing pop up. And then an old lady pops up kind of thing because presumably she was still there from banging Max. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it, it's weird. So what ends up, the big difference in this movie is at the end when they're having the big fight, Max and Leo, the cops show up, arrest Frank and they arrest Max, but they don't arrest Leo because Max hung him up in the closet so Leo steals the money with Uya, and they go to Brazil and get married. And then they decide to come back hey, and he's like, go to jail. Yeah. And we didn't actually talk about the end in the last one, but um, he comes back and he goes to jail with with Max and everything. But there's a there's another gag that comes up throughout the movie. Uya comes in, she's like, "My name is Uya," and she gives like fifteen names. Yeah. And she goes, and my last name is, they're like, we don't have time. So then at the end, when they're in court, she's like, my name is Uya, like all the names. Yeah. Last name, Bloom. She's like, you married this guy? And she goes, yeah, he wouldn't have sex with me unless we were married. And he's like, what a smug. Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought that was funny. There's no LSD character no in this LSD. one. So Will Farrow's character, Franz, was going to be the Hitler. Right. So, yeah, when they're, I, they're auditioning the Hitlers. Franz freaks out and is like, that's not how Hitler acts. That's not how you sing this song. So they do him, but he breaks his leg. Yeah. Like there's this weird scene where Bloom says, good luck, everybody. And everyone freaks out. <laughs> and then they're like, that's bad luck. And then Max is like, oh, bad luck. So he goes and gets a ladder and puts it by the door. So all the actors have to walk onto a ladder. And then he grabs like a black cat and throws <laughs> it. And then Franz breaks his leg. Yeah. So they put the director on and the director flays it like super this scene, this movie was kind of homophobic, like crazy. It, it, yeah. Like there's a, there's a whole very troubling song or, where when they go to recruit the, the director, director yeah. and it's the same thing. He's dressed as Anastasia. They do the whole like I didn't realize the Third Reich was in Germany, but his assistant. They, the, I did appreciate this joke. I thought it was pretty funny when they when the assistant introduces himself. He's like, I'm his common law assistant. So basically saying they're in a committed relationship. <laughs> Uh, I actually thought that was a pretty clever joke, but they keep saying like, oh, my rule with plays is you keep it gay, right? Yeah. So then they're like, let me get my, my production crew. And then one guy comes, like it's the choreographer and he does like some pun around singing or dancing. Yeah. And then he says, you keep it this, keep it gay. And then like the costume designer comes up and he's like, you keep it flowy, you keep it gay. And then somebody else, and then they bring on a lesbian character and she's like, who I don't remember what the stunt coordinator and she's like keep it gay yeah. and then she's like it needs more tits kind of thing like just really weird like this this movie I don't know. is is the original but just like up at eleven it's Spinal Tap and it's just at eleven <laughs> it, but not funny it's just not it's just yeah it's too much it's too much to be honest and the thing is like there were legitimately good jokes in it like there was another joke that I really liked when uh, they go to get Franz played by Will Ferrell. Well, I actually liked Will Ferrell in the Franz role. I thought he did a fine job. He was alright, yeah. He he has his birds, but they have these weird animatronic birds that react to his singing, which looked goofy. But when they go up there, he goes like, "All right, I need you to deliver a message for me," and he throws the bird up in the air, and then the bird he go flies away, and he's like, "That's not where Argentina is. That's the other way." <laughs> and I thought that was clever because you know there a lot of Nazis fled to Argentina. Yeah. Kind of thing. So I thought that was, you know, kind of a clever joke for people who understand history. And then they had this whole thing about them doing like a German dance with him to show that they can appreciate the German culture of the play. And like he keeps hitting them during the dance. And... Guten Slap. <laughs> yeah. And then they do 
he makes him do like this weird oath to Hitler and the consequence is death and they're like is death anything like death yes kind of thing. and it, then there's like another kind of homophobic scene at the end when they're like fighting when he's trying to get the books back and the same thing fat 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 I hate you double 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 uh, Max takes the books and he lies down on the ground so Bloom lay, like is oh, on yeah, top yeah. of him and he's just like give it to me give it to me Give it to me, and then the director comes in. And he's like, "That's a great way to celebrate." And it's just like, <laughs> "Oh my god, ah, Jesus!" <laughs> and then like Bloom sends a le- like the the thing that I didn't like about this one. There's a lot of things I didn't like, but at the end when he decides to show up and Max is giving this like speech, like when he has to say something for himself in court, and he's just like, "You know, I've never had a friend." Blah 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 blah. You know, I've never had anyone loyal to me. My friend abandoned me. He's like, and then Bloom shows up, and then he gives a speech. This basically the same speech as the original. Like, yeah. hey, don't do. He didn't do anything wrong. Blah 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 blah. And then he goes into the same speech that uh, Wilder said. Like, nobody's ever called me Leo before, and you know, he's the first person to call me Leo instead of Mister Bloom. And the thing is, he called him Bloom until the night of the play. <laughs> and so that kind of bothered me. They made a big deal about it, but he never really did do that. Where in the original one, he called him he Leo the him whole Leo. movie. I didn't catch that in the remake. Oh, shit. Yeah, it actually kind of bothered me a little bit. So the main thing that we didn't talk about on the other one was the very end of the movie. They get arrested. They go to jail, and they pull the same scheme in jail. <laughs> yeah, they're putting on a play with the inmates. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought this was really funny in the original. So a guy comes up and gives money to Gene Wilder, and he just like, stamp, 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 <laughs> stamp, 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 just randomly putting stamps, yeah. and he's like, you owe 45% of the play. <laughs> and then a prison guard comes up, is like, the warden wants in, you owe 100% of the play. <laughs> and then that's kind of it. You just assume they're going to do it. Yeah. So my question was, how could they get away with that? Because the warden's going to force the prisoners to watch the play, but how? who's going to pay for the play? Like, who's paying for this play? Yeah. Is it going to go on tour? I I thought that like they they said then he make he also made note that they're gonna go somewhere they're playing on like Saturday night. Uh, Maybe I know for sure they said that in the newer I, one. So in the newer one they yeah. say we're gonna go to this. I think they also prison say in this the, prison and this the prison. On the, and they just lifted that off of the original. Oh, I missed it then. But in the new one, they get pardoned. So they're like, "Hey, good news! The you got pardoned because you're doing a great play in prison." So then they go and take the play that they were doing in prison. <laughs> Do it on Broadway, but then it's super successful. And then it shows them doing like Cats with a K, <laughs> Death of a Salesman on Ice, and then they become really successful uh, producers. Uh, I don't know. I, I yeah, I didn't. I don't. I I I don't know how I feel about them being pardoned. Like I, I it, it's just uh, it just does things. It's that, too happy, and they don't deserve a happy ending. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I I the original. I like that journey with them, and like it cuts off. Right. They, like they they're still paying time. They're still serving time, but then, you know, they're still doing the same uh, shtick. <laughs> right. It's funny. Like, that, I appreciate that because it's like they're doing their thing and they're still doing it. That's who they are now. In the new one, it's like they get their kick and eat. They broke the law. They don't have to serve their time. Bloom gets to bang Uma Thurman. And then they both become rich and successful. Like, it's just it's it's not a satisfying ending to me. Yeah. it's So yeah. I think it's safe to say that I think this movie was not. Yeah, and granted, it's not a true remake. It's based off the play, but the play is based off the movie. And I don't know, like, it's weird. So this movie, um, like on IMDb for like reviewers has like a ten out of ten. Really? But like an overall, for a lot of reasons, as an overall IMDb score is at like a seven point something. Uh, Metacritic, it's like a five. Okay. And like reading it, a lot of people did not like this, and it got nominated for Golden Globes, no Academy Awards. But I don't understand how it got nominated for Golden Globes because it is—it's not good. Yeah, I do, for what nomination was it? <laughs> best Best Musical or Comedy? Yeah. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, and the thing is, you know, I might have liked this better if I watched them further apart. But I watched them the same day, mm-hmm. so maybe I would have liked it. Or if I just watched if, if I, the two thousand five yeah, one, just watched the remake, I, I may have liked it. Maybe. But watching them both so close to each other, the original one is so much better, and it's it's so much quicker, and it's just it's it's just so snappy. <laughs> and I really hated the damn birds in the new one. I don't think this is a necessary movie. 
De- definitely not. Definitely not. Like, I, I think I don't even know and if I like want can... it to be remade, to be honest. Like, I, I kind of just like the original. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I, I think it's like if they acted like a movie, because there are other movie musicals that work as movies. Like, Hairspray is yeah. a fun movie. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've already, you know, talked about The Greatest Showman. Like, you could do a musical in a movie that's good. Like, Miz is stan is a very solid movie I, but this just they, they did it it's like they filmed a play yeah that's what what it no, is no i think you, you nailed and, it when you said it like it, it needs to have a good balance of like plot and a musical number uh, you know something like that that understands like what film goers want and what what what, what the audience is it's not uh unlike like a play where like you know like you go in knowing like okay this is gonna be this i'm gonna sit here and this is like i'm gonna see this play from a wide perspective and like have everything emote more like you said over like over emoting because like to to get your point across and stuff like that but it doesn't right. it doesn't work when you're like you have a close-up shot and you have matthew broderick like over emoting and stuff it, it's it doesn't really play out too well Part. no i agree like so at one point nicole kidman was gonna be Ouya, huh. uh because she worked with matthew Broderick on the stepford wives which is something we should cover but she so she accepted the role without reading the script because matthew Broderick, like this the play was huge like yeah, yeah. why would you not want to do it but when she got the script she dropped out and said that she was just too busy and working too often lately and wanted some time off yeah. which means she didn't want to <laughs> do it because it looked bad so i think it's safe to say this isn't one that we felt was necessary but uh, thanks, everyone, for listening to this episode of Remake Rewind. <laughs> Check out our podcasts um, on YouTube, in, uh, Stitcher, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube. I think I already said that. <laughs> check out our other podcasts, uh, Ruin My Childhood with me and Kat. And if you want to support the show, check us out at patreon.com slash mdxpods. We put out every episode early on there. So if you want to listen to the episodes earlier, you can do that there. And uh, it's just a great way to support the show. And uh, that's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks, guys.